Hey, we had our Christmas service. I hope you all enjoyed yourself at Christmas. I know I did. Uh, didn't eat too much. This year, uh, I controlled myself, if you want to put it that way. We had our Christmas dinner yesterday. Uh, we saved it. Uh, we stopped the vultures from taking it all home. Otherwise, we'd have had nothing left. But this, today, we're going to be talking about the new year. and It's a New Year's sermon. Um, and it's an interesting time of the year, although it really is a nondescript period. Um, people put too much emphasis on the new year, that the new year is going to bring great change. A lot of the time it brings major disappointments because we're unable to keep those changes. Amen. I'm going to start with James 4, 2 to 3 this morning. You desire and do not have so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend in your passions. Running on the theme of my Christmas sermon, it's going to be slightly the same in the beginning asking you are who you are to be God chose you to be who you are you just have to trust and obey him we try to change how others see us or we have to see ourselves all is temporary because a lot of the time we don't really want the change we are happy with who or what we are. That is why change can be fleeting to suit how you feel or are today. There is only one change that lasts forever. That is to be reborn into a different person. Change your old clothes and walk in new. Get rid of the old man and put on the new. Renew or reboot your mind to be how it was supposed to be and not how you've made it to be. Get back in touch with your spiritual person who what was and is not now. Remember you are a spiritual person possessing a soul and a human experience. Just like God did when heaven came down to earth in the form of birth is Christ. Changing spiritually is an eternal change forever for the benefit of you and God. Not you and how others perceive you to be to both then and now. You spend a lot of your time looking at what others see how you are instead of being exactly who you are a lot of the times you are split personalities you are who you are but with social media today you present yourself to be somebody that you are not it's easy to go onto social media and be somebody that you're not. The problem being, that if you're not that person, then how do you live up to be that person? It can only end up in one place. Disappointment. Because you can't be somebody that you're not. Because you are who you are. And you need to be happy with who you are. You need to be in touch with who you are. Not that shroud that's around you of somebody being that you're not. It's an interesting one, social media. It's almost as though it's a place to be that you don't want to be. You would like to be, but you can't be. Because you're not that person. God never made you to be that person. 
God made you to be the person that you are here, sat now. Not somebody else. Eyes forward to Christ and not looking back to the addictive worldly ways. You can be a new person. You can be rid of the old ways. You can find peace within yourself because you never get peace within yourself unless you are to be who you are. A lot of people see what you want to be, they read what you want to be, but when they actually see you, then that's a disappointment to them. Because you're not who you portrayed yourself to be. You can't, you can't be dishonest to yourself, you have to be honest. But it all starts with you. 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, I have the right to do anything. You say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. As with everything in life, you are who you are and who you want to be. That's why you like yourself before you can really like other people. Do you know that? If you don't like yourself, how can you like anybody else? How can you love anybody else if you don't like yourself? You must be happy within yourself. It's sad to see an unhappy person. Because the first thing that you ask is, what's wrong with them? What's made you unhappy? Why is it that you can't be happy? What is it that's pulling you down? What is it that's stopping you from going forward? To love is to have passion about what you think and do outside of yourself. Therefore, it must first come from deep within, emanating from a well of goodness, which Jesus calls a river of righteousness flowing up from deep within. You're either cold from a latent righteousness or a deep desire to change who you are. But why change who you are? Why try and be somebody that you're not? Why try and be somebody that you see on television or listen to on the radio or watch a video? They are who they are. Why? Because God put them where they are. And God put you where you are. God wants you to be where you are for his reasons. He don't want you to be over there. He wants you to be here. We often think of ourselves as, and can be simplified to do a checklist. Let's make a list. That will sort everything out. We have shopping lists. We have to-do lists. Wish lists. And more. By the end of January, you probably have broken most of them, you know that? By the end of February, you'll have even forgotten what they were. But here we are, two days before the beginning of a new year. But the morning of the 1st of January comes not only a new year, but for many of us, a hope of a new me and great expectations of ourselves. Well, that's not good for a start, is it? To put ourselves on a pedestal of great expectations, because you know you're going to fail. The trouble is, more years than not, we quickly realize it might be a new year, but it's the same old me. The month of January gets its name from the Roman god Janus. He is depicted as a two-faced man. One face looks forward, and the other face looks back. As we think of New Year's resolutions, we can look in three different directions. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We call it normally past, present, and future. You can't change the past. You are who you are today, 
But you can change the future. You can be different. But that doesn't apply to being superficial. Superficial is superficial, it will still get washed away. Change comes from deep inside. Change comes within you. Change can be said as being a spiritual thing and not a physical thing. How you think, what you think, and what you do emanates from inside of you. Not something you grab off of a shelf at a supermarket and say, this is what I want, this is who I'm going to be. It doesn't work that way. You are who you are because God wants you to be where you are. The month, uh, as we think about New Year's resolutions, the Israelites were no strangers to looking back either. God had to deal with them as well. Moses once encouraged them and said the words in Deuteronomy 4 9, Be careful, watch yourselves closely, so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. What has been has brought us to where we are today. That's easy. What you've done in the past, or what you've done yesterday, is where you are today. If you've done something different yesterday, you might not be where you are today. You are a culmination at the moment of everything you've done in the past. If you maybe studied a little bit harder at school, maybe studied a bit more on the homework, but a bit more diligent in your exams, decided to take a certain course instead of another. This all changes to where you are today. If you made a different turn in a path in your life, you had a choice, you came to a crossroads, you decided to go left instead of right, where would have right taken you? I don't know. You don't know. But you took a left. Do you think it was you who made that decision, or do you think it was someone making that decision on, your, on behalf of you? Was it someone leading you? Why do we wait to the new year to make resolutions? Why can't you do them during the year? You have 364 days. Are we saying that you've wasted your life on 364 days? Leaving everything for one day? For you to make resolutions to change your life for the whole year? You know it ain't going to happen. Philippians 3.13 says, Forgetting what is behind and straining forward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize, for which God has called me, heavenwards in Christ Jesus. When we need to make changes in our lives, we often make New Year's resolutions. The Bible tells us that all plans, resolutions and such need to be according to God's will that we should make a simple commitment and keep to our word. That's an interesting one, keep to your word. And that we should not delay in carrying out our word. Why do we wait to the new year to make resolutions? Why do we have to make our word happen once a year? What happened to the rest of the year? Is it because it feels like a fresh start? Is it because it feels like a second chance? In reality, every day is a second chance. Do you know that? Amen. Every hour, every minute is a second chance. I had a second chance 10 years ago when I had heart surgery. I took that second chance. I live every day as if it is my last day. Because 10 years ago, it was my last day. 
And I was given a second chance. It changed my life. It changed where I was too, what I was thinking. My whole outlook changed. Because I had a second chance. It wasn't a New Year's Eve thing. Thought I woke up on New Year's Day and said, hey, I'm changing my life. No. Every day can be a change in your life. Every hour. What does it all mean? Ecclesiastes 1, 2 says, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless, everything is meaningless. That's Solomon saying, vanity of vanities, everything is vanities. What does that mean? Did everything you do is meaningless in sense respects, unless it's a change for the better. You can't store up your wealth because you can't take it with you. And the wealth you have stored up will be squandered meaninglessly by those who get it who haven't worked for it, who don't appreciate it. Like you appreciated it when you gathered that wealth. The word the meaningless means vapor in he Hebrew. So all that you do will be long forgotten. And in a hundred years' time, what will they remember? Nothing. Nothing. Except for a name on a gravestone. Meaningless. Everything is meaningless, unless you do something profound. And it's written down in the archives for all to read for years to come. Remember that all that stuff you put so much importance on is only important to you at this moment in time today. Because tomorrow it won't be important. It's only important to you today. Socrates once said, the worst of all deceptions is self-deception. Deceiving yourself to who you think you are that you're not. Why can't a person just be who you are? Why do you have to think that you should be better than what you are? We are who we are. We were given this body. We were given this mind. Does that make us inferior to somebody else or superior to someone else? No, we are all equal. We are who we are. Be honest with yourself. The Apostle Paul admitted this mistake in Philippians 3. He'd set goals that were the exact opposite of what he should have been pursuing. In the middle of other goals, he received a wake-up call that he needed to trade in his New Year resolution, believe it or not, to where it might be needed he had to do. He learned that life with Christ must become the most important objective. Amen. It was his life's resolution, so to speak, and it should belong to us too. Philippians 3, 7, 14 says, oh, that's 7 to 14, by the way, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything to a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his surroundings and sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, 
I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 27, 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest what a day may bring forth. So what sort of New Year's resolution should a Christian make? That's an interesting question. What was your resolution? Or did you make a resolution? Or are you going to make a resolution in two days' time? Are you going to keep that resolution in two years' time? Is that resolution something that is obtainable? Or are you just picking stuff out of the sky because it sounds good, feels good, only to get depressed after a week because it never happened? And it never will happen. Amen. Because it was never not meant to happen. Resolutions are something that is a goal that's obtainable. Make it something that you can get, that you can do, that you know you can achieve. If you're a smoker, you can give up smoking. It's something achievable. If you set your mind and heart towards it. And there are many other goals in your life that are achievable that are obtainable, that you can work towards. And when you get there, the pride that overwhelms you, that you have made it, you have done it. With the help of God, of course, and the will of God. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach. Listen, and it will be given him. Regarding with resolutions, if any, he would make, have you make. Psalm 37, 56, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your coals like the noonday sun. Lastly, Philippians 4, 6, 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. None of us really like change. Change makes us uncomfortable. We need to get comfortable, listen, with being uncomfortable because you need change. You can't stay as you are. I came from, I come from a marketing background. I'm going to tell you an oxymoron. If it's working, fix it. <laughs> I've never heard of anything so crazy in my life. What it means is, is what's working today will not work tomorrow. And unless you work on what's going to happen tomorrow, you won't be here today or tomorrow or in six weeks' time. A product only has a short lifespan. And then it will go. You need something else to take its place. You must be looking forward all the time. Not backwards. I made my money this way. And I will always make my money this way. No, it won't. It will change. And you will lose your company if you do that. You have to change with the times. Church has to change with the times, but still keep the foundational philosophies. Amen. Change is good. And let me tell you, no matter what you do in your life, change will happen. What is good today will only last a short period of time before change will change it. And unless you're willing to change with the times, you will get left behind. Doing what you always done, in the same old way that you always do it, and you will get changed and left behind. You change when you're ready. You can try and make yourself change all you want, but until your heart is in charge, Ain't going to happen. 
Not being ready is not an excuse. God expects you to change. God expects your spirit to change. Do you think that once you've said, Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I believe on you. Do you think that's all that it takes? Jesus died on the cross to save me. Jesus Christ took all my sins and washed me clean. Do you think that's it? And that's it. Got to do no more than just say those words. And that's it. No. It's a lifetime. It's a lifetime commitment. It's a lifetime walk with Christ. You're running the race. You don't give in on the last turn before the finish line. You run the race. You get the prize. Remember, if laws work to keep us moral and doing the right thing all the time, when God would not have needed to give his son Jesus, would he? Changing every day, we come more today than we were yesterday. We will be more tomorrow than where we are today. Changing is part of life and part of, listen, growing up. Just because you're another year older doesn't make you more mature. More mature is learning from your mistakes and changing that it never happens again. That's maturity. I feel sad when a person aged 50 looks back on his life and says, I'm the same exact person as I was when I was 20. Well, that's 30 years of a wasted life, isn't it? You've done nothing for 30 years because you're the same today as what you was 30 years ago. That's sad. It all starts with change within yourself and then you see everything in a different light. Before we can change the world around us, God wants to change the world inside of us. The phrase, be inspired and not left behind. Remember that no matter where you are, it is there that you are supposed to be. Today is not a result of yesterday, nor will tomorrow be a result of today. Every day is simply the result of God's intention in your life. You can't change fate, but you can change the way that you handle it. Do you really think that all those changes you made in your life that worked were by your choice and by your own making? I know the ones that failed or did not work were yours. But really, in order for God to get you to where he wants you to be, he changes you. And you have to submit to that change. And when you submit to that change, he then allows you or he molds you into where you want to be because he wants you there in the beginning. To get from A to B, you need help. Very little do the times be that you do it all yourself. You need help to get from A to B. With the Lord, he guides your footsteps. He holds your hands. But you know what? You've got to be going forward in the first place. You've got to be moving forward. He will open the door. The door won't open by itself if you're sat down in the chair. If you're sat in the chair, all you'll get is what's in the chair. God is in the business of improving your future. Listen, not rectifying your past. He can only work in the future, not alter what you've done already. What you've done already is by your own choice. Let him make the choice for your future. He knows your past and present. What you have to do in order to be in the right place at the right time, listen, with the right heart. To be what he wants you to be in order that he will be able to be carry out 
the things that's beneficial for others, who need your spiritual help. Did you know that people need your help? People need your guidance. People need your spiritual love. Why? So that they might get spiritual eternity. And how do you get spiritual eternity? With salvation. If you don't believe in yourself, no one will. If you have to believe that you have the power to change, you have to know beyond the shadow of doubt that you can change. Unless you can change, how are you expecting anybody else to change? James 2, 14, 18 says, 14, 18 says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. I finish by saying, change is inevitable. The question is, can you embrace it or you procrastinate within it? Can you use change or are you just going to stay there while change just wraps itself around you, leaving you the same as what you were? <coughs> Romans 8.28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. Luke 1 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. My last scripture, and closing on this scripture, Philippians 4 13 says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So this New Year's Eve, if you are going to make resolutions, make them achievable. Try taking them to the Lord and asking the Lord, is this change that I'm thinking of doing, is this for me? Or is it my wishful thinking that I want to be like this. If it's something that you wish me to be, then hold my hand and take me forward. Embrace change. You've all changed someone or sometime in your life. Some change has been for the worse. Some change has been for the better. Isn't it good that you go for the better all the time? Walking with the Lord, then make changes that aren't supposed to be for you and end up falling flat on your face. Think of that this New Year's Eve. If you're thinking of change, don't do it cosmetically, but do it something that's going to have an effect. Do it that's going to last for a long time. Do it from inside out, not outside in. It's easy to change your, your perspective view by putting a different sweatshirt on or applying extra makeup or new makeup or new makeover or new hairdo. A new hairdo is not going to change you. Change comes from within you, inside of you. And it's irrespective what other people look at you like. As long as you are happy with yourself, you're walking with a spiritual mind and a spiritual heart, 
then what difference does it make what other people think of you as long as you're walking with the Lord and believe you me it won't be long before they will be looking at you in a different way not the old way they'll be looking at you and saying what has that person got that I haven't got and it's simple it's all here bow your heads